Hey everybody and welcome to our last Deep Dive Tuesday for this series. All summer long, we've been doing this series because you asked and then on Tuesdays we come back with a deep dive on the topic we dealt with the previous Sunday. This week we took a lot of questions that were asked around how do you love God, about what kind of music is appropriate, just a whole lot. And instead of taking one of those questions, we kind of put them all together and they really were summarized in a question that a Pharisee asked Jesus. He asked Jesus, of all the commands, what's the greatest? Now, they had 161 commands, so they really thought, we got Jesus on this one. And Jesus answered that with a one sentence, uh, how to sum it all up. And that yes, is, sir. to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Uh, some some other places in in say with uh, your strength also, mm -hmm. and so we dealt with that this last Sunday. But we want to go deeper. We basically had two points, and the first point was that we express our love through worship, mm -hmm. and we talked primarily about worship being in, in our context our music right now worship right. means so much more than that it does and so i have with us our worship leader mark off and so mark talk a little bit about uh how we express our love for god through worship and how you want people to prepare for worship mm -hmm. when they come we think how we how we express our our love for god is uh through our through our worship through our praise um, and that can be singing, playing an instrument. In fact, the Bible, we talked about that on Sunday, about playing the 12-string the lyre right. or the harp. Uh, and, of course, those instruments. We're going to get to Troy in a little while. We have. You mentioned lyre. Oh, oh just wow. just a minute. I got okay. more than 12-string. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's to use our voice to, to, to give God praise, to give God praise for all He is and to show our love and our appreciation for Him, our gratitude to come to Him with a humble heart and, um, and sing, sing out loud and unapologetically about Him. Yeah, even if you don't sing so well. Even if you don't right. sing so well because what He wants is your whole heart. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, love yeah. the Lord your God with all your heart. Correct. With all your soul, yes. what does that mean? Well, I think what that means is is taking time out, and this would be um, in regards to your question about how to prepare for worship. How do you get yourself ready for worship? Well, that it's a lifestyle, um, but on a Sunday, any given Sunday that you're getting ready to come into worship, it's important for you to spend time with God, uh, private time with God, time alone, just to talk to God, pray, um, spend time in His Word, meditating on His Word, and trying to understand what it is that He has for you. Um, you need to be in that place yeah. before... Which engages the mind, which correct, is the other, right? Which is the truth part. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, uh, we're examining our relationship with the Lord, and then we're also you know, diving into His truth yeah. before we come into worship. Yeah. That's to all, worship corporately. That's all prep for us to come in and worship yeah. corporately together. Yes, Imagine what would happen, right? Yeah. And, and let me just go ahead and say this. Worship is not the warm-up act for the message. Correct. Okay. <laughs> right. That's what people think. <laughs> How many people treat it Correct. like that, right. right? No. Worship is your personal mm. engagement on a, on a weekend service right. uh, to the Lord. And I do want to share this. Um, heard a pastor talking about the power of music. Mm. And uh, so why do we sing? Why is that such a priority? Well, because of the power of music, mm -hmm. right? Music connects us to persons, right. to, to emotions, connects us to places. Um, and a time. And a time. Like we hear sure. 70s music. That's, I mean, we immediately yeah. sort of, oh man, yeah. I remember. In fact, yeah. I, I actually heard <laughs> A pastor say he will not listen to secular music mm. because it does connect him to a past that he doesn't want to remember. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I'd listen to 70s, you know, seven on seven, 70s on seven yeah. uh, on Sirius, yeah. and a song will come up, and immediately I'm at this concert, or mm -hmm. immediately 
I'm at this place. And I understood what he was talking sure. about. Now, take that and put Christian music in there yeah. and think about the power of that. Yeah, this song ministered to me when I found out my mother had passed away. Mm -hmm. Or this song ministered to me uh, Our funeral. during, right? yeah, I during connect a, with a funeral. funeral. I can only imagine, you know, Absolutely. hearing that song. Sure. I think sure. This was a song that brought me to intimacy where I couldn't even sing anymore because yeah. of the closeness that I felt, right? You bet. So we express our worship through, um, through praise, but mm. we demonstrate our love for God through obedience. Mm. Talk about obedience for just a second, Troy. Uh, you know, it's interesting that the commands are always pointing to us to praise God. And why is he telling us to do that? Why should we be obedient to that? Because he knows our nature, our heart, soul, mind, and strength mm -hmm. are going to worship something. We, we were built to worship something. And so what God is saying is worship me. I'm the best thing for you to worship right. because I know your tendency. And this is when the idolatrous nations that you read about, they were all pulled to worship something. And so it's in us, and we just have to make sure that we're worshiping the right thing. That's why what you do is so powerful through music. What you do is so powerful through the message is that you are forcing us, pushing us, motivating us to worship the Lord, and that's where obedience is found. Mm. All right, let's talk about the flip that's side great. of that. What is the result of disobedience when it comes to our expressing our love for God? Well, the disobedience always is about separation. So the minute you are not obedient to the Lord, you begin to separate and you begin to sense something. And so the worship time, uh, the message time, is all to draw us closer to God. When we separate, we see what happens in our lives. You know, our heart, soul, mind, and strength begin to fail in ways. Mm. We begin to be depressed. We begin to be anxious. Mm -hmm. We begin to pull away from the things that are important, church, small group, uh, family. And so um, God knows us, and he knows us well. And so we have got to worship him and make sure that we do that. What you do, what you do when you're worshiping, I sit there and I go, man, I wish I could sing like that. <laughs> I really do. But I can't, and I never will. But... I've learned just throughout life is that there are so many other ways I can express my obedience and love to God. Mm. And um, I'm sure there's some things you wish you, that, that I do that you wish correct. you could do. That and, is correct. Uh, but we're all doing it together to give God the glory. Yeah. yeah. Now remember, well foundational, what we were talking about is loving God. Mm -hmm. mm. And we express it through worship. We express it through obedience to God um, and without a just a total commitment to God it is impossible to keep that command um, because if I'm 95 percent in still five percent out All right and that still affects my worship sure. that oh, disobedience affects my love for God and all of that so we didn't plan this, so just either one of you. Um, how do we overcome that fear of what total obedience might mean or might cost us? Because I think we have a feeling if we totally submit to God, we're in Africa, you know, living yeah. in a hut to share the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. So in your lives personally, um, or maybe what you've seen, what's, what's that thing that keeps us from total commitment to God so that our love can be complete? I think it's two part one, a little bit of um, self-love. We're afraid. It's fear, fear-based. And then, uh, I don't know, I also feel like, though, that if you... 
I don't know, help me out here. I'm getting a little bit lost in my thoughts there. But but I would say fear is a big yes. part of it. And rel I'm sorry, and relinquishing control. Yeah. I want to control. I want to be in control. I want to know that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And so, okay, well, but now I'm not trusting God with where he's calling me. Yeah. I would know? say that so. 5% is also distractions. That there's, mm -hmm. especially during worship, I'm just thinking of yesterday and um, worship, I'm constantly just being pulled in all these different things that are going through in my, my mind. I don't know if I'm necessarily trying to control those things, but I'm just like, it's all popping into my head. So it's just, it's always the world that has that, I'm going to say 5% hold. It might be, it's probably more, <laughs> is is trying to pull me away to not give glory to God mm -hmm. and to give attention to something else. Yeah. And so time, distractions, those sort of things. I guess I, if I disengage from them, I might be afraid that those things will get lost and overlooked. So my mind keeps to keep thinking about these things, keep thinking about them, and I can't give it all over the 100% yeah. that I would want to. That can certainly happen on a Sunday morning for any worship leader. Oh, <laughs> right. a staff They're member, so, any staff so member. So full of potential distractions, yeah. you know, yeah. whether the, yeah. the equipment's not working right or this Absolutely. isn't happening or you're missing people because of sickness, car breakdowns, whatever. And those are just all more, all distractions yeah. that can pull you away from staying, you know, yeah. 100% glued in. And let's not negate the spiritual warfare part of this, mm. right? Because one of the things I said this last Sunday is uh, the deeper we love God, the deeper we're going to worship him. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the deeper we worship him, the more that's going to drive us to love God. Yeah. So what the enemy is going to want to do is break that cycle. Sure. Right? Through distractions, through worries, anxieties, sure. through our own ego. You bet. Um, and, uh, and let me go back one other thing about the mind, mm -hmm. and then if you have anything to share. Um, I mentioned this Sunday that we should mean the words that we sing. Mm. We need to think about what we're singing to God. Yeah. Uh, this is a personal expression to God. And I shared, I grew up lying to God in church all the time. I surrender all. No, right. <laughs> right? Sure, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I'm singing that and I'm happy because that means this is the invitation song and we're fixing right. to go home. I get to go eat lunch, right? I surrender most. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. like, I it. Oh, several times I'm singing songs like that, and I come across that a lyric like that, yeah. and I and I immediately hunch down and like, wow, I'm really falling short here. Yeah, yeah. I do mean this, but not like literally. I can't, I'm not doing that. Right. All right. So as we close, um, Mark. You mentioned this. Talk about personal worship a little bit more. What does that look like for you? Well, for me, um, you know, my whole life, music has been my sort of direct line to God. That's where I found him first. And, and so that's always been an intimate moment for me every time. You know, and he, you know he creates each, each of us uniquely, and he can, created me to... To worship him and uh, spe specifically through music okay. so it doesn't surprise me that that's where I would have found him but in maturing um, over the years what I've discovered is that I can find him without the music you know and probably in the last 10 years been the first time I've really realized is well I don't have to have the music yeah. To to find him, right. I can find him anywhere. Of course, that's not bad to have the music. So oh no! What I want to say not. to those who are at home is, if if that speaks to you, mm -hmm. then find that playlist, find that that um, station yes. that really feeds your spirit it, and yeah. brings you back to focusing on God. You were talking about distractions. A yeah. playlist like that can really help. Yeah. Uh, just clear the clutter and get your focus back on God. Yeah. And then, Troy, how do you do a checkup on obedience? I would look at some of the uh, markers in your life. Um, are you excited about Sunday morning? 
Are you excited about your small group? Um, is your family a priority? If you start to find that some of the other things are sort of creeping into that priority list, uh, where where are your finances going is another yeah. place to sort yeah, of absolutely. sort of check where your obedience is. So I think you know, looking at your time, looking at your money, um, what has the priority in your life, and even your passion <laughs> to spend time with God. If that's not there, there's a reason, and sometimes it's because of disobedience, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. And I, my, mine's very different than yours. Mine is being in the Word of God. My salvation story was tied to being in the Word of God. Mm. I'm a writer. You're a musician. Yeah. I like the printed Word. So like today was Second Peter chapter 2 and Second Peter chapter 3. I was just there. I learned so much. I just feel that connection with God. Uh, music isn't as much part of of my worship time as it is being in the Word of God. I don't think that's wrong. No, no not at all. Not. That's, we're all unique. So as we close, the people you love, you want to spend time with. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. If you truly love God with all your heart, yeah. soul, strength, mind, mm -hmm. you're going to want to spend time with them. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't want to spend time with them, something's wrong. Yeah. You need to figure out what that is. Yeah. And it may be that you just have never known him. Or it may be that there's an area of disobedience that you need uh, to ask God to help you to understand and to repent of. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Thank you guys again so much for joining us. I hope you found these deep dives helpful over the summer. And like I said, a watch. We're about to enter into a new sermon series. We won't do these weekly, but we do have some powerful deep dives coming up that we'll put out sporadically. Uh, during the next several months. Thank you again for joining us.